Hi, today I want to talk just for a few minutes from the topic, good fruit. And I'll be using as a text, uh, Luke 6, chapter 43rd through the 45th verse. And this is what it says. No good tree bears bad fruit, nor again does a bad tree bear good fruit. For each tree is known by its own fruit. Figs are not gathered from thorns, nor are grapes picked from a bramble bush. The good person out of the good treasure of the heart produces good, and the evil person out of the evil treasures produces evil. For it is out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. Have you ever watched a TV show or a movie or something and wonder why did the writer include uh, particular words? It used to be that you only had to be concerned about certain words in the movies. You know, it, is somebody going to use a four letter, as we call it, a four letter word in the movies? Um, so you knew if you could take your child or not based on the rating they gave you to the movie. But uh, lately, it seems like things have changed. Um, whereas we would occasionally hear damn or hell or something like that, um, or maybe even the S word. These days, if you're watching TV, you hear all kinds of words, the profanity that you really wouldn't want to share with your children. I'm guilty of watching some of those shows. I have to admit that I have sort of a, what you would call a guilty pleasure of watching some of the 90 Day Fiance shows or, um, you know, watching a show like The Shaws of Sunset. I do watch that. Um, I should say my wife watches it. I just happen to be in the room while it's on. <laughs> well, that's not true. I, I watch it just like she does. I won't throw her under the bus. But last week I was watching one of those shows. I think it was a 90 Day Fiance show and, and, and the other show too. Um, people were using profanity, just cussing like a sailor while holding children. And it bothered me because I thought about, you know, what kind of energy is going into that, that child? You know, where do those words come from? Where does that anger that's usually associated with those words come from? And how does that energy affect that child? It used to be back in the day, I'm, I'm old enough to remember when we didn't say certain things around children. We didn't say certain things around adults. We didn't say certain things around women. There were just certain unspoken rules that we followed, but that all went out the window. Our society is different now. We, you can turn on Netflix any time of the day. You can you know, stream movies, stream uh, shows, and you can get whatever language uh, these folks want to use in their material. It's not like it used to be. You know, I, I, I just wonder what these children in this show that I was talking about, I wonder what those children are going to be like when they grow up. What kind of language would they use with their friends and with their teachers and perhaps even with their parents, even though their parents may not even care, but we used to care what people heard and what we said to folk, but it's not that way anymore. And I'm wondering what happened. I don't consider myself to be approved, but I don't think there's any good value in an abundance of profanity. You know, um, the other day I was at work and I pointed out uh, an issue to my project sponsor, something that they left out or they didn't consider, and it was negatively impacting our budget. And so when I wrote this to her, I was really surprised when she wrote back, rats. <laughs> and it was so funny to me, but it was interesting because I knew exactly how she felt when she just said rats. You know, it was Charles uh, Schultz the, uh, of Peanuts uh, who said, I have a strong dislike for vulgar phrases and find the terms good grief and rats will cover almost anything that happens. My grandmother used to be like that. If she said sugar, or if she called you a son of a sea croaker, which is a fish, um, she really meant that. She didn't curse, but those words let you know that she was upset, let you know that something was going on. So if we don't always have to use profanity. Sometimes we just have to come up with another phrase. 
And sometimes we have to use, um, we need to think through what we're really trying to say and paint a picture with our words. Paint a picture and let somebody know in a, in a, in a clear way that I'm upset and this is why but I don't have to use profanity to get my point across. Jesus was talking about this sort of thing in the text. You know, who we say, what we say and who we are is important. And if you're going to be a follower of Jesus, if you're going to be a follower of the way of love, there are certain things that should not come out of your mouth. But the thing is, they don't start at your mouth. They start somewhere else. They start in your mind. They, they start in your spirit. And so Jesus is saying that, you know, it's out of this source, this deeper place that this, these words come from, the, the things that come out of your mouth that either help or hurt. They come from somewhere inside. And that's why he said, no tree, good tree bears bad fruit, nor again does a bad tree bear good fruit, for each tree is known by its own fruit. Figs are not gathered from thorns, nor are grapes picked from a bramble bush. The good person out of the good treasure of the heart produces good, and the evil person out of the evil treasure produces evil. For it's out of an abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. You know, he was trying to talk to his disciples. This text comes out of a section of Luke that's called the Sermon on the Plain. It's similar to a smaller version, actually, of what's in Matthew that we, many of us know of the Sermon on, on the Mount. Um, and it's a, it's, a, it's a collection of the teachings of Jesus about how, if we're gonna be a follower of Jesus, which means we're gonna be a follower of love, this tells us how we're supposed to act and how we're not supposed to act. But he uses a metaphor of a tree and fruit to try to get that point across. So being a follower of love, being a follower of Jesus in many ways is like being a healthy fruit tree. I had to look up fruit trees and see what's necessary for a fruit tree to yield um, healthy fruit. And the first thing that's really necessary is good soil. A healthy tree needs healthy soil as a foundation. Just like a tree, we need that as our soil. We need a healthy foundation too. We need things like confidence. You know, um, I told a story recently about me being on a plane with a little boy and how when I tried to help him and show confidence to him, it helped me realize that I had answers inside of me that I didn't even know were there. But it's helpful to have some level of confidence if we're going to yield good fruit, if we're going to be able to share something that's helpful. Affirmation. That's another thing that's important for good soil, that we have affirmation. We affirm ourselves or that we've had people in our life who cared enough to affirm us. You know, I'm, I got through a, a little patch in my life because I remember my mother saying to me that I have more faith than most people that she knows. And that came back to me at a moment where I wasn't sure I was operating in faith. And I thought about that. I'm like, yes, I do have faith because it's in me. But somebody had to remind me that it was there. I had to affirm that. The other thing we need for good soil is peace. We can't have trouble with soil. We have to have the right pH balance. And, you know, you, things need to be peaceful. And there has to be a certain wisdom in us, in us if we're going to grow. We need to be in soil that has wisdom. You know, it's important. I often like to sit with the older people when I'm out or at a church function or something because we learn lessons from people from what they've been through. We don't have to have the experience of everything. We just have to be around people and be open to receive from them. We need to have humility if we're going to have good soil. Um, I read something that said, there's nothing noble in being superior to your fellow man or woman. True nobility is being superior to your former self. We're only responsible to us and we need to be humble enough to say, I, I'm a person who's in progress. My soil that I'm in 
is soil that I use to better myself, not to be better than you, but to be better than me. You know, the other thing that we really need after we have good soil is we need sunshine. We don't need shade. We've got enough shade in our life. We need to fill our life with as much positivity as possible because we have enough rainy days in our life, days that we don't have any control over. When things happen in our life to bring us down. We, we can't always control the circumstances of our life, but we can have enough sun, sunshine that's inside that when those down days come, those problems come, those troubled times come, we ought to have enough sunshine in us that it doesn't matter how much shade it is, that we have the energy of the sun, of the light that's inside of us. You know, it's helpful for us to do things that make us smile every now and then. Go for a walk, take a vacation or a staycation, read a good book, you know, binge watch something funny or positive, you know, um, Go do something to help somebody else. You know, I read that some of the most useful words are not necessarily I love you, even though those are nice. But the few words that are really, really helpful in life are the words, I'll be there. I'll be there. Think about how good that makes us feel, what kind of sunshine that brings even to the, the rainiest of day. If somebody you love, somebody you care about says, I'll be there. I'll be there for you no matter what's going on. I'll be there for you if you need me. Think about how powerful that is. That's needed if we're gonna be good trees, healthy trees who can help somebody else. Water, nutrients, that's important for us. If we're gonna be a healthy tree. If we're gonna be able to bear healthy fruit, we have to have the right nutrients. You know, too much or too little, it, it will cause problems. Too little nutrients will dry us up and too much can cause us to drown. We need to feed our spirit with positive thoughts and positive words and sacred texts and motivational texts. We need to be able to do that and be able to share positive words with others to help them through their days. But then we also have to know when to listen, when to stop sharing. You know, um, like I said, too much is too much and too little is not enough. And so what we need is to be able to have a balance, to learn when we need to speak and when we need to be quiet. Somebody said, blessed is he who having nothing to say can be persuaded to say it. Blessed is he who having nothing to say can be persuaded to say it, which means make your words count. They increase in value by choosing them carefully. Less is more sometimes. It was, who was it? Um, Chief Joseph, who said, it does not require many words to speak the truth. Somebody needs to say that in Washington um, to folks who are trying to make us think we didn't see what we saw on January 6th. So make your words count and make sure they're true and make sure they're honest. Next thing you have to do is pest management. When you're trying to have a healthy plant, healthy tree, pest management, you um, need to know what's good for you and what's bad for you. Sometimes it's people where we have to do some pruning um, to get rid of the pests, get rid of the things in our life that don't serve us, the things that don't feed our spirit, the things that drag us down. I mean, we've all been in places and around situations that we knew weren't good for us. And we needed to get rid of the pests in our life, even when the pest is you. We need to be able to look inside and say, you know what? Something's not right here. Let me get rid of this, this foreign agent in me that I know is not going to lead me to being a healthy me. So we need to be able to do pest management if we want health, healthy trees. Because there is such a thing as cross-pollination. We, you know, some trees grow better if they're next to another tree and they can cross-pollinate. And so we need to be able to be around different types of people with different ideas and different thoughts. Diversity is important. Um, I, a, an Islamic proverb says, a lot of different flowers make a bouquet. Um, but then also on the flip side, we don't want to cross pollinate with things that are not healthy for us. Um, I'm sure we've all had 
uh, people in our life and circumstances in our life that we knew weren't good for us. But we have to be able to see that some places, some people, some situations are not good for us. And we need to keep ourselves out of there if we want to be healthy enough on the inside that we can bear positive fruit in our world. I mentioned before, we have to be willing to do some pruning, you know, take some time for critical self-reflection, look inside and see what inside of you, you choose to change, not what somebody else needs for you to change, but what you need to change. We can't change other people, we can only change ourselves. And so we need to take some time to look to see what in us needs to be pruned, what needs to be um, taken out of our life. See, the point that the writer of Luke was trying to get across to his readers was, if you want to be a follower of the way of Jesus, if you want to be a follower of love, you need to be able to act like somebody who says, I am a follower of the way of the one who taught us how to love each other, the one who taught us about unconditional love from God, the one who taught us that love matters. We, if we want to be a follower of that way, we need to be able to watch what comes out of our mouth and pay attention because what comes out of your mouth sometimes will tell you the condition of your heart and where you might need to make some changes. It was Napoleon Hill that said, think twice before you speak because your words and influence will plant the seed of either success or failure in the mind of another. I'm glad I've had this opportunity to be reminded of the kind of fruit that I want to yield through my words, um, to, to be reminded of, about the kind of influence I want to make in the world. I wanna close with some words from the Christian mystic um, Henry Nowen. And he said, did I offer peace today? Did I bring a smile to someone's face? Did I say words of healing? Did I let go of my anger and resentment? Did I forgive? Did I love? These are the real questions. I must trust that the little bit of love that I sow now will bear many fruits here in this world and in the life to come. My friends, we have an opportunity. We have an obligation. Our world needs for us to bear good fruit. Thank you for listening.